Welcome to Blinded by Science, a weekly appreciation of all things science. I'm your host, Anthony Namfito, sci-fi writer and teacher. But for this podcast, you can think of me as your science ambassador. You can subscribe to Blinded by Science on the YouTube channel Namfito Space or wherever you listen to podcasts. Visit anchor.fm forward slash blinded by science for more details. All right, let's get to the science. A G C T. That's you, that's me, that's every living life form on planet Earth. I know what you're thinking. Anthony, your name doesn't have a C or a G in it, and my name has none of those letters. What are you talking about? Well, you're right about that. My name doesn't have all those letters, and maybe your name has none of them. But I'm not talking about your name. I'm talking about something more unique, something much more interesting. No offense, I'm sure you have a great name, and it's very special. Those four letters, A, G, C, T refer to the base pairs of deoxyribonucleic acid, or as it's more commonly known by its stage name, DNA. As described on MedlinePlus.gov, quote, DNA is the hereditary material in humans and almost all other organisms on Earth, end quote. Let me say that again. DNA is the hereditary material in humans and almost all other organisms on Earth. That means you, me, your dog, the birds outside, the fish in the water, that mosquito that bit your thigh last night, those bacteria growing in your toilet, and every other living organism is made up of some combination of those four letters. A. G. C. T. That's it. That's all it takes to create all the fascinating life that we see on this beautiful planet. But how does it all work? How do those four letters get combined and recombined to create such abundance? Well, those base pairs are connected together in a tightly wound double helix, or ladder, made of sugar and phosphate molecules. In between those sugar and phosphate molecules are the bonded couples of adenine thymine and cytosine guanine. In other words, adenine pairs with thymine, cytosine pairs with guanine. There's no polyamory when it comes to DNA base pairs. They're monogamous. If you want to see a diagram of what all this double helix of sugar phosphate molecules and base pairs looks like, check out the video version of this podcast on the YouTube channel Nanfito Space. This ability of DNA to be tightly packaged into a double helix allows it to store a ton of information inside a tiny space. How tiny? Well, most DNA is stored inside a cell's nucleus. The nucleus of a cell is like the headquarters for that cell. It stores the DNA, keeps it safe, and when the time comes, it makes copies of the DNA. Yeah, that's right. DNA has the ability to self-replicate. Cells create copies of the DNA when they divide. And having an exact copy of DNA is critical because each new cell needs to have an exact copy of the DNA present in the old cell. Think of it like creating books or movies. How disappointed would you be if the copy you bought had different chapters or scenes than the original? That's going to make some awkward conversations with fellow bookworms and movie enthusiasts. Just as it's important that you get the exact copy of your favorite book or movie, it's just as important for your cells to get an exact copy of DNA. Without an exact copy, the cell won't function properly. And that's how things like cancer develop. They're cells that have damaged or poorly copied DNA, and they're not doing their job correctly. And each cell in your body, or any other organism's body, has a specific task or function. And the DNA tells that cell what to do. 
Maybe it's a skin cell or a red blood cell or the cell in your heart muscles. Whatever cell it is, it has a job and it needs to do it right. According to MedlinePlus.gov, quote, human DNA consists of about 3 billion bases and more than 99% of those bases are the same in all people, end quote. Let me say that again, because that is just amazing. Human DNA consists of about 3 billion bases, and more than 99% of those bases are the same in all people. 99% of you and me are the same. We're each unique, but so much of us is the same. And it's all built with those four letters, A-G-C-T. I hope you remember this next time you see a fellow human being or another earthling. You're more like them than you are different. That concludes the first segment of Blinded by Science. We'll take a quick break before our next segment, Science Did What? And we're back. Welcome to the second segment of the pod. This segment is called Science Did What? Because it's where I share an interesting and developing news story about what science and scientists are doing right now. So let's get into it. Ah, breathing air is pretty good, right? Humans, like many other animals, need oxygen to breathe. This is also true for some bacteria, but not all. About a century ago, scientists discovered some bacteria can breathe anaerobically or without oxygen. But only in recent decades have researchers started exploiting this property to fabricate useful materials. Today's story comes from Scientific American. The article is titled, Metal Breathing Bacteria Synthesize High-Tech Material, written by Karen Kwan. Kwan reports that a team of researchers, led by Shayla Sawyer, an electrical engineer at the, apologies if I'm pronouncing this incorrectly, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, have, quote, found a way to use such bacteria non-oxygen breathing bacteria, that is, to manufacture an up-and-coming two-dimensional material called molydenum disulfide, or MOS2, which can form a sheet just a few atoms thick and holds promise for future electronics, end quote. Why is this so exciting? Well, MOS2 is a versatile compound, but it's hard to synthesize. It can require temperatures ranging from 200 to 500 degrees Celsius. That's 392 to 932 degrees Fahrenheit. And it requires a crushing pressure, 10 times the atmospheric pressure we humans experience every day. That's more than what you're going to get in your standard pressure cooker. If scientists can further develop this method of using anaerobic breathing bacteria, then they would be able to synthesize the material at room temperature. Yeah, it could just sit out there on the kitchen counter. Just don't get it confused with your next meal. This is all possible because anaerobic bacteria normally expel electrons as part of their respiration. Unlike myself, who is currently expelling CO2 as part of my respiration. In an oxygen-filled environment, those electrons expelled from the bacteria normally bond with oxygen atoms. But in this case, the engineers place the bacteria in an anaerobic environment, or a place devoid of oxygen. Through trial and error, or in other words, the scientific process, they were able to determine the best suited metal compounds to place in that anaerobic environment with the bacteria so that the bacteria-expelled electrons would bond with the metal compounds instead of the usually present oxygen. And as a byproduct, MOS2 is created. 
This compound, MOS2, can be used in electronic devices, such as sensors and batteries. And again, this is created at room temperature, not in the high temperature and high pressure environment usually needed to manufacture MOS2. The challenge is to be able to control the uniformity of the material's repeating patterns of atoms. This can be a bit tricky when dealing with living bacteria, but the lead engineer, Shayla Sawyer, assures us that the future of synthesizing materials from bacteria is bright, and we've only just scratched the surface. This is so fascinating. I mean, we already use bacteria and other microorganisms to make things like cheese, yogurt, and beer. Why not use them to make other materials? Materials that can build things. Materials that can be used in electronics. This is truly an example of science fiction becoming science fact. Thanks for listening to this episode of Blinded by Science. This podcast was recorded, produced, and distributed by yours truly, Anthony Manfito, using Anchor.fm. The theme song is Crimson Fly by Huma Huma. The logo was designed by myself using the app Over with image credit to nasa.gov. If you liked what you heard, subscribe to the podcast on the YouTube channel Nanfito Space or listen wherever you get your podcasts. To support the show financially, learn how to subscribe or listen to previous episodes, visit anchor.fm forward slash blinded by science for more details. Until next time, I encourage you to find the science in your life and share it with me on social media. You can find me on Twitter at Words by Fifi and on Instagram at Haiku by Fifi. Tag me in your posts and show me the science you discovered. This is Anthony Manfito signing off. And remember, stay curious.